Yeah. Now then, delighted to welcome to the studio Vinnie Perth. Vinnie, thanks for coming in, appreciate it. No, it's great to be here. Busy few days, busy couple of months, I presume. Now it's time to suddenly breathe and go, oh, right. I presume I don't have anywhere to be tomorrow necessarily, kind of a, a time um, for you, or is it like that? No, it's actually not like that. So it's it's such a busy time. I'm in the middle of my pro license as well, so I just got an email through. So I need to be careful uh, giving out what's ahead of me. I still haven't I still haven't gone home and told everybody what's ahead. So I have a couple of um, visits to do in December. I've got to go to Middlesbrough and got to go to Celtic as well as part of the pro license. So, and then you're you're constantly busy and. Um, stuff going on and uh, new players and finalising squad and plans so it's quite a busy time like and um, it's a bit like anything it's what you see on match day takes a lot of preparation and so there's huge amount of stuff to go into the next couple of months and why Middlesbrough and why Celtic um, well I suppose uh, Robbie's on the pro license Robbie Keane so we, we'll spend some time there see what they do and it's just shared knowledge really Damien Duff's obviously a Celtic so that's part of the plan and um, doing Holland Belgium and people share share ideas and, and that's really how it works. And a couple of guys have come in to, to Dundalk to see what we do sort of outside of the, the pro license part of it. So it's all that sort of shared knowledge and, mm. and, and that's where I go. And sorry, I, excuse the ignorance, are you in the class with Robbie and Damien at the moment? That batch we see photos of every couple of months. Yeah, yeah. so Keith Andrews would be in there as well, Paddy McCarthy, uh, be very, very strong. Andy Reid, very strong group at the moment. Um, so it's a really it's been a brilliant course and it's been um you know it's more that shared learning is where you really pick up stuff so what kind of stuff what kind of tidbit did you take from one of the days where you thought, that's interesting i'll use that that's that's useful to me um i i suppose like you, you pick each other's brains i mean uh, someone like paddy mccarthy is someone i'd find really interesting and he, he discuss he's working with crystal palace youths so he discussed that sort of how working with youths it, obviously being a premiership player and dropping down that level and how he's ad adapted. So um, Damien has presented to us in terms of what he do on his, what we would call a minus one day in terms of his video sessions and how they would, they would train uh, and what they do with Celtic. And so some of it's reaffirming what you do and saying, yeah, I do the right things or all of it's small little things you pick up. And, um, and again, like, to be fair to the people on the course, Andy Reid, and there's, there's some brilliant people on that course, even League of Ireland people like Paul Hegarty, he would share his knowledge, and he's obviously dealing with part-time players, and, and we get stuff out of people like Paul Hegarty, John Cotter from Cork. Yeah. So it's, um, it's, been, it's been, that's been, uh, what would I say, really, really, that's really helped my development, I think, and it's been not necessarily what the course puts on, it's not necessarily a certain topic, Sometimes it's that, that's just that shared knowledge. and Chat over, been, chat over yeah. a cup of coffee almost sometimes. Yeah, and yeah. it's definitely been like that because we've had a huge level, like obviously Robbie and Damien and Andy have played the highest level and Paddy, McCarthy, but you've also have people like, as I said, Paul Hegarty would have some stories of, of situations he's been in and in Finn Harps or when he was managing Derry and, you know, you pick up from that. So it's been, um, we sp we've had a guy in from, from Iceland and some of the, you know, the stories around how Iceland have redeveloped their game and what mm. they've done. And again, you're just picking up knowledge as best you can. You've been in League of Ireland dressing rooms, professional dressing rooms, and obviously you've been at Dundalk for some time now. And this is that first year where you step up and it's over to you, Vinny, and you've got to make a lot of the decisions. What surprised you about the role? The, I, you know, you're very, very close to Stephen and you, sus you see what's going on and you suspect you'd have a good handle on what it will be like when you actually get into the hot seat, was there anything about the role which jumped out at you and, and you thought, oh, I didn't quite figure this would be like this? Uh, not, to be honest, not really at the start. At the start, it wasn't because I was very conscious and, um, you know, I'm not an, a, a, an a, a, I can't even say it now, I'm not an academic, but I'm someone who would be very much into self-learning and I would have, you know, the, the likes of video prep, I would have taught myself how to do that over the years and brought that, that type of, of stuff into my game. But then I really felt I was very conscious that I didn't want to become, because I'd coached at the club for six years and very hands-on, I didn't want to just all of a sudden stand in the background and put a big jacket on and, and, and be sort Mr. Of be Manager. This, be this, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Manager. Call me Gaffer. Know, stand, yeah, and so I was very, very conscious. I've got, I had a lot of personal relationships with the players and um, I didn't want them saying straight away, I've changed. I'd, I'd say if you ask them now, they say, yes, I changed. But I'd like to think, you know, that slowly developed as time went on. Because um, there's nothing more than a dead giveaway than someone who walks in 
and has tried to transform themselves in 24 hours. It's, yeah, it's fake. It is, and it's and I was very conscious of that. And I, I slowly, w I would say, I built into, you know, um, making subtle changes. And I suppose for me, one of the best compliments I think I've got this year, and most people wouldn't see it, but it is that people say Dundalk haven't changed. They're still the same, but we've changed a huge amount How so? in the background. Well, well, some of it was on the way, but we we've redeveloped our training ground and we've redeveloped. Um, what we do and how how we how we do it and um, our video sessions and just small subtle things we changed and we've always involved over the years. I mean, we were part time up until even in '16 when we had that great European run. We were effectively part time. Mm. The staff was part time. This year, the club changed and really changed. We went full time a couple of years ago, but our kit man was full time. And I think um, so. It was for me, it was the perfect storm. The club moved into a new training base and. Uh, the players probably associated associated that with me. So, um, so things started to change subtly. We 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 obviously the training changed because uh, we had a new guy doing my role. Even though I was a bit more hands on um, as opposed to just the manager, I felt um, I was coach stroke manager very much in the early part of the season. I was very conscious of that. So. Um, and we, we developed, I think. Vinny, have you had to distance yourself from the players a touch, be slightly less pally than you might be? Because the number two is often talked about as a bit of a go-between. Yeah, and, and I, you know, I'm very conscious that, as I said, I, I self I self learn as such or listen to a lot of stuff. And um, I know it's very conscious of cliches nowadays, but one good one I heard on one of your shows was, was uh, Stuart Lancaster said, once you decide, you divide. And it is true, and it's as simple as if you decide to come in on a Saturday morning or do an extra session on a Sunday, you do the void. You, there's no doubt you, you brown players off, they're like, do we have to be in? So once you're very clearly making them decisions, as an assistant, you can be, I've always, you know, myself and Stephen would, would row about decisions, just the two of us, we'd have it out, and ultimately we'd come to a decision. Sometimes I'd win, he'd win, but then I'd go and, and not necessarily go in and say, that's the way it is. I'd, I'd have empty with the players. I know it's a Sunday morning, I know, we had to, I know we have to make this change, but we're doing it for this reason, that reason. So, But once you make that decision, then you are dividing, you are, your players are getting into the cars going, you know, can't mm. believe this, uh, I wish we weren't, I wish we'd more notice. So, um, I had to change, I had to change, and, and I had to change. And so um, I always had this joke and, and part of the warm up, and, very conscious who I said it to, but at the same time, to break the ice of, oh, I was the gaffer, you'd be playing to somebody, you know. Um, and we got a little laugh out of it, it was to break the ice. Mm. I could never say that again, obviously, you know, for example. So little things like that. Had Is to it change. a more lonely role then? Do you miss that interaction with the players? Um, no, like, to be honest with you, I really, a very, very strong relationship with the players over the years. and. Um, I felt they were like I, I was like the big brother. There was always something they could come to me with. So um, it is it is a lonely round, yes, because um, you know the certain things then you you can't share with them or or, or whatever it is. You, you you know you had got twenty twenty two real close friends as such, and you you treat them like a brother. Even though there was times where I had to get yeah get cranky with them, but at the same time, yes, you can't have that. I mean, one of the secrets to coaching, in my opinion, is, is sort of not hearing certain things and not seeing them yes. when they go on. So, yes. um, but then when you're the manager, you have to be very clear that yeah. if you do hear something, you've got to address it very quickly. And so you talk about that that Lancaster interview. He does a, a show here with Jer, which is well worth checking out. And I, I understand, you know, you were in with Leinster having a look at how they do things. So th this self learning, this effort to improve all the time. And you said at the same time you're not an academic. Did you leave school early? Was that because of football or? No, no, it's just it's just not my nature. I would, um, um, and I'm not I'm not shy about saying, and I actually hope it helps other people to say that. I mean, I mean, I don't know, I don't know what the right word is. Where like, I would I would be, I don't know whether it's even partially, or I don't know what the right word is, but I would I would struggle with um, literacy, not. 
like I can read and write, obviously, but yeah. I would have a certain amount of struggles with that. So in like the, the, the kind of somewhere in the family of dyslexia? Yeah, I'd be on, the, I'd be on that if it's called the spectrum is the r right word. So it would be somewhere there. I would have would have done OK in school, but I would never have, have gone to the next stage. And did anyone in school, because it's changed so much it's, now, it's, did anyone say to you, you know what, Finny, just looking at your work here, yeah. I think there may be something. Did that happen? Or no, and, yeah. and, and maybe this isn't it, <laughs> but like it's a bit like I was very good at maths, but then when someone said on a test, a train leaves Dublin at five o'clock and it has to go to Cork and it takes two hours and that, if someone just gave me the sum, I would have done it. I've yeah. done it in my head as such. So the language. Have, but the language and, and the way my, my, my brain picked it up was different. I'm not shy about talking about that. And then... Well, there's, what, no, there's nothing to be ashamed of. No, about and... and um, Did and, that make school uh, an absolute nuisance and a nightmare? Or was no, that okay? I, and I'd done quite well in school, but then come test time, they were, people didn't understand it and they didn't, well, how did he do this? I had, and back then, we had the highest class and the middle class and yeah. the lower class, and I was always in the highest class. I was always, I wasn't shy about speaking up. And um, so I'd done well in the, in the actual work, but then when it came to test time, I probably struggled. Um, because and, these days you'd get extra yeah. time for your test or there'd be allowances made. Absolutely. Is yeah. that a regret? And um it is, yeah, and it's 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 funny I have um my, again <laughs> I'm not afraid to say it, my, my my son has autism a very it's a mild enough for want of a better word strain of it, but he gets so much help. It's amazing. His teachers is you know, there's so much he, he didn't speak for his first couple of years and you know he, he the way he's learnt and the way he's come on and mm. he teaches us stuff nearly at this stage and he's... What age is he now? He's 11 now and he's very, he's very bright in a different way. And again, what's, what's different, what's normal? Mm. So what I like about that is, and even my own sort of journey to where I've got to is that, again, when I played, I wasn't that good. I was someone who, who struggled, who would have played in midfield and not, not that technically very good. And then people looked at me and went, oh, I played with this team, a Longford team, very famous team at the time, mm. in three and four. But we were seen as as not a likable team. For you know, we were, we weren't Wimbledon, but we weren't far off it in that sense. So you were there, kind of ninety eight to 04. Yeah, and people and and around that, so people would uh, people would would it, would put you in in boxes, like and say you've done dirty leads kind of territory. Yeah, 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 not far off it, and um, I. I used to say I wasn't dirty, but I was slow. So I arrived there late. It wasn't. It was just because I was slow. That's my only excuse. But, but then I. But people had this perception of me then. Then, like, well, it, that's the way he played. He held balls on. He put them into corners. Or, but, like, I had completely different beliefs in the game. I believed in in fullbacks and attack and play. And I had complete other different beliefs. I, I grew up in the 80s, so that great Liverpool side of the way they passed the ball, that was my belief. I couldn't do it myself. Okay. So I always wanted a coach. I wanted to manage from a really young age, and it was like it was bottled inside me. So again, uh, it's, it's great that, and, and I don't, I don't want to say I've got to the, to the top, but I want to say I've, you know, I've achieved the league yeah. title, right? So Absolutely. Uh, to be able to do that coming from that background means surely then, um, Anyone, anyone can do it if they want, and um, you know I've probably been accused of being lucky because I took over Stephen's uh, side, and mm. you know we've a big budget and they've the best players and that. But I think I've worked, um, I've worked hard enough no, to no, get I, there. I think it's huge vindication because uh, with all those benefits comes pressure, and pressure to succeed, and everybody's watching how you're going to do. And if things start going off the railway, off the, rail, off the railway tracks, then suddenly it's career ruination for you. You know, you look at someone like David Moyes, different parallel, but yeah. similar. You know, people are saying, well, look, he couldn't cut it. So if you had made an absolute mess of this first season with all those extra benefits and the squad and, and Stephen leaving the team in good shape, then you're in trouble. Your career's in a bit of trouble. So I don't know how conscious you were of that pressure. Obviously, you were chasing down Rovers for a large part of the season, but whether you engage with that reality or not, that was what was going on. And we were all looking, us in the media, we were all saying in here, Howard and Doc doing under Perth. at family yeah. all saying it. Like people, people are saying, you're sure it's the right job at this time? Yeah, um, you, you can't be, afford to mess it up. Because we don't have, we don't give coaches second chances in this part of the world and we just don't do it and it's, you're judged on your first job, so... Um, did that, was that, did you feel that hanging on your shoulder a bit? I did, but, but in one sense, I had no choice. You couldn't turn down the job. Couldn't down, yeah. You can't turn down the job. Who knows if it's the right moment? 
Um, I had I had left a, a decent career outside of the game. What were you doing? I was a I was a salesman for for maybe 10, 12 years for for a company based out Dundalk. So um, I loved that job and I I had built a good career. I had good income and I I made a choice to back to 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 back Dundalk to back Stephen Dundalk the whole club, and then all of a sudden I was I need to fight to to make this mine. Mm. So I I was backed into a corner. Uh, but I always wanted to do it. The problem was I'd spent six years coaching and I was like, mm, maybe I'm a better coach than manager. Maybe this is where I should be. Some people are. And, and yeah, and absolutely. And that, and that was the challenge, so I wasn't sure. And then, as you said, um, there, was, there was the whole sort of legacy was Dundalk going to keep going. Mm. You know? So, yes, but I suppose I backed myself. I got, a, I got great backing from the club. To, to be fair, um, Mike Tracy was very, very much in favour of this was the right thing. Mm. We've probably got ridiculed about using the word continuity the way the world has gone now, but that was his word. He believed in continuity in the club, and you know um, that's what we did, and it went from there. I remember, I think you were in here with Nathan, maybe around a year ago. You'll, yeah. you'll know better than me, but I, my memory from the interview was you were brilliantly honest about the fact that it was a bit of a blow to you that Stephen didn't take you with him. Did that knock your confidence? Was that something that took a long time to get over? Every time you see the Irish under 21s in action, does it crop up in your head? Where are you with that? No, it it, it doesn't. Like, I mean, uh, the, the initial disappointment was real. Of course, yeah, absolutely, and and it became a headline. The fact that I said I dreamed of going to a World Cup, like, I don't apologise for making a statement like that because I I grew up in a time where we played a game called World Cup and it was everything and. Mm. Uh, I remember probably really first World Cup, maybe 86, and if you think about how good that World Cup was, for example, and, um, you know, that I, I don't, I don't, like, I really, I really think that a lot has changed in my life this year in terms of, in terms of my coaching, in terms of my, my beliefs in football and, and me, my own ambitions, and mm. I suppose it, it's funny that really what changed me was that Midway through the season, um, I just felt that I was spending too much time listening to noise, listening to people commenting on what we were doing and where we were at, and um, even the good noise and sometimes it's bad noise. And I just felt um, that I just needed to back myself, trust what why I was doing and what I believed in. And um, again, if I if I can go back to my my son when we lifted the trophy the night we lifted the trophy. He came out onto the pitch and he wasn't at last year's cup final, not because I was only the assistant manager, no interest. He asked could he not go because he didn't want to be anyone's way. Mm. Which was just, w w when, when someone has autism, they tell you the truth. They just say, I think I'll be in someone's way. It's not that he's, you can perceive that as being cheeky or bold. Mm. And sometimes the, the so-called normal kids, you say, no, you're going to the final, that's it. But with you're, him, you're, he was... Yeah, he was no, normal kids, you're looking for an excuse. It, yeah. was, it was very definite why he didn't go. So when we that's, quite, that's quite a sad reason to hear. Y yeah, but... That he's no, but, but Yeah, but what he meant, I, I suppose what he meant by that was, he was saying to us, you are going to have fun there, I won't. And because I won't, I'm not interested in football, then it's better for you. It's actually, it's a really sweet thing to say because he was wanted the rest of the family to enjoy it. And he wanted to stay with his gran, so it wasn't that he, uh, he didn't. So that made sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when we lifted the trophy, um, I got a shock. He was on the pitch, and he was clapping. And normally that's not him. And I was like, okay. No. And then it, when I lifted, when he lifted the trophy, his arms went up, and he was spotted on te TV. And I probably got more texts that night from parents and family going, "Wow, it was amazing mm -hmm. what Killian done." So. That was a real thing for me to go. I probably spent too long worrying what other people think and trying to prove people wrong because everyone was going, so that's done dog finished. I nearly hoping you were because, you know, the more you're successful, people want to knock you in. I said, you know what, it made me realise why I do it and, and what, what's it all about. So mm. um, put a bit more perspective into what I do and made me sort of, you know, get back to focusing on, on what I was good at and what. What yeah. we were all about, you know. So you're saying Killian, eleven now. Yeah. So what age were you when he was born, give or take? Uh, I was what, mid thirty three, around that age, thirty two. Yeah. Equipped to handle that news, that 
Yeah, it, it, listen, um, it's difficult. It's difficult because, particularly with a boy, um, you know, I have a daughter who's 16 now. She, she, she's quite successful in her own way. She's done a certain amount of river dance, all that stuff. Right. So she, she, that's great. But with your boy, you're always going, hope he plays football, what can he do, all that mm. stuff. And he's just never had an interest in it. But to be honest with you, we get to, uh, we get to celebrate the things that are normal for other people. So uh, I remember him singing happy birthday to me wife when he was probably four and a half. It was about half four in the morning. And if my daughter had done that, we'd have thrown her out of the room with him. It was probably one of the most special moments. So mm. you get this, you get to, it's like going onto the pitch. Me, on the other night lifting the trophy, it was a special, special moment for me. Mm. It's just a normal, for anyone else, it's normal to have the kid there, thereabouts. For me, that was special. So there's you get to celebrate other things. There's more joy in the humdrum of life, almost. Oh yeah, the nor the normal things for everyone else. And um, as I said to you, um, it's it's just a different perspective, and it probably makes things feel a little bit more special for mm. for when you achieve them. You know. Yeah. So you now, I mean, look, the cup final defeat, I'm sure, was painful because oh, would have been lovely. And geez, what a season then. But I presume you're still looking back on this first year, and we would have seen the Linfield uh, result the other night, which is you know a nice little send off for everyone for sure. You look back on this season and feel satisfied and happy and relieved, or are you kind of going, work to do, need to get better? What, what's your overriding sense uh, of things? I suppose what, what the cup final like will do is, and, and, and people might say, oh, well, you know, he's trying to take a, po a positive over a negative. What you do is you, you definitely learn more when you fail at something, right? So what the, what the cup final taught me was it reaffirmed what I felt was wrong with the squad. Um, it made us it put made us have a little bit more perspective for next season, so it's at the creating a little bit of hunger mm. um, in the group. Effectively, we've entered four five competitions this year domestically. We've lost the penalty shootout, and other than that, we would have won the five of them. Now, it wasn't just a penalty shootout. We weren't good against Shamrock Rovers mm. in the cup final, and that there was a huge hurt in the group over that. But I think what we did was um, we sort of. The Linfield game was brilliant for us. It, it sort of gave us a, something just to get a little bit of focus back. Remember, we're gone since the fifth of January. Most teams are on the holidays now, and it's been it's been a we played fifty over fifty five matches. Most teams play thirty five, maybe thirty eight if they've had a good run. So we've had a huge amount of wear and tear. But we probably had, in terms of training week, the best week I've had in six or seven years at the club. We've had brilliant weeks in terms of. You know, bad days week or going over to Zen at St. Petersburg and coming back for a cup final. But there was a real uh, fun element to us this week. I, I, first time ever, I never named the team walking into Windsor Park, so players were guessing. When we got there, there was like massive disappointment from guys not being in the team. The stadium was amazing and, and it created a little bit of hunger around the group again. And then the game, it was a really good game, and mm. I know Linfield have been criticised over the result. Mm. But it was a real good game up there, and we came back, and there was an edge to us. And um, and Monday, I just thought Monday night was one of the most people have criticised Linfield, but we were just good. Dundalk at our best, yeah, yeah. and um, and and so it ends up being a really positive end to a season. For yes, us. yes, yes, yes. And actually, because I saw, I, I didn't see the games. I I was watching the six 0 win in here. So yeah. I didn't have sound up, but I, I'm seeing things about some IRA chance and vice versa. As a as yeah. a as a going forward kind of advertisement or a little venture, I mean, I hope the All Ireland League happens, bigger, stronger, better, all that kind of thing. Did you see anything which would overly concern you? I know you've said, look, we don't want IRA chance for sure, and I condemn that. Yeah, and and one thing, like there was chance on both sides, and I I can only comment on Dundalk. It's not my place to comment on Fair anything enough. that yeah. uh, Linfield have said or flags they put up. But in terms of Dundalk, like and you know, I said it. I said it a couple of times. I grew up in an ivory tower, I call it, but it's killing Arden and Tallis, so it's far from it, right? But so in the eighties, the troubles were real. But we've only seen them on TV. They could have been in, for all I know, yeah, the Middle Israel East. and yeah. Middle East. They meant nothing. So I'm very respectful that people in border towns on both sides had a difficult time. Mm. But this was a football match, and there was a tiny, tiny couple of chance here and there. And and the best way I can equate to you is. When Liverpool play Manchester United, there's the odd Munich reference and there's the odd Hillsborough reference. And the more they play each other, the more that drifts away. I think we get used to I think both teams need... Linfield, 
if they want to progress in Europe, I think the manager will learn a lot from the game the other night. It, he probably challenges players and say, that's the level we need to get up to, mm. to, to be able to compete. And genuine, I know it's, it's a 7 1, but the first game felt like a European game. Loads of the ball, uh, and they'd done exactly what they'd done to Carabag. They, they counter attacked, Laverty scored a great goal, and it was a very much similar to the goal they scored against Carabag. So I learned a huge amount out of the weekend. Um, I think we, if we're going to improve le both leagues, then we've got to explore this to the inch of its life. Yeah. Um, I think it's a massive opportunity um, and we'd be in favour if, if it can happen and yeah. both teams genuinely, both clubs are very respectful of each other, both benches, both set of players um, and it passed off ultimately with not an yes, ounce of trouble, it did, it did, not yeah, an yeah. ounce of trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, we're out of time, out of time, are we? Yes, okay, I'll be in trouble. I did want to ask you, well, a lot of other things, but certainly about the general handling of the game in this country and where it could go and what's not happened or happened over the last 10 years, but we'll do that again. Listen, I'm thrilled to see you do so well because I must say, any time over the last number of years Dundalk have played in Europe, I think it's been a real sense of pride for Irish football. And at times, I know you probably can't say this, but we can, it highlighted what wasn't happening with the international team. Irish players can keep the ball and play good football. So long may continue. Well done on a really good uh, first season. Vinnie Perth, and we'll talk to you again. Cheers. Cheers, thank you. Football on Off The Ball with Paddy Power, the greatest 